is essentially Knight Rider dealing with its fictional equivalent of Playboy, Nuts, Zoo, call it what you will. Michael is sent to investigate the murder of Escape's publisher, Philip Royce, under suspicious circumstances. There is a story within his computer under the name Topaz, and no one can seem to work out the access code to access it. Not even Philip's daughter, Lauren, knows the code. I like the idea of a private investigator whose Emma was having a photographic memory, so no files were kept. Quite original. And unfortunately, he gets iced as well for his troubles. This is the second time that Knight Rider goes to Las Vegas, and the first time since the pilot. I did find it odd that Lauren would board her, pro her father's private jet and leave Michael hanging back in Los Angeles. I did find the moments of him helping Lauren celebrate her birthday very touching as it showed Knight's softer and more sensitive side. And this episode featured one of the more iconic action moments with Knight scrabbling up onto the jet after exiting the Trans Am. Another clever aspect of this episode where it gave a big clue away as to what the access code was that Ann Tyler was Ms. November which Topaz is the birthstone of that month, and it was her measurements that were the key to unlocking the code. Of which she uncovered a story that was exposing a drug that had been approved and then later recalled due to problems, and this was why Royce had been murdered. This also featured one piece of footage of Kit Turbo boosting over a canyon that has since been reused as stock footage over later seasons. This also featured the first usage of Kit's printout function. As for acting, I can't think of anyone that turned in a bad performance. David was solid as usual, same with Edward and William. Really enjoyed Gina Michaels' performance as Lauren as a woman frustrated and angry at the people who took her father. Jack Starrett plays his role as Hagen well as this stone-cold heel that has no scruples about how he handles his business. It's worth noting that he returns in Season 2's Kit the Cat as Lieutenant George Barth, and in Season 4's Sky Knight as Sheriff, about the only time he played a good guy. As for the score, another decent performance from Don Peake, who was really finding his footing as the composer on the show. Time for discrepancies! Oh dear. Before Michael drives out of the semi... Kit's front is facing the hatch of the truck, but in the next scene, he drives out backwards. Goof. When Michael climbs onto the outside of the airplane, he positions himself in front of the jet's air intake at least once. Anyone doing so would surely be sucked into that engine. After George Olin is shot and Michael yells Kit to drive over to where he and Lauren Royce are, cr are crouched, we see Kit's gear shift gradually move from D to P as his engine is heard starting up, and then he immediately backs up. This sequence could not happen because A, a car's engines cannot be cranked while the automatic transmission is gear, due to a neutral safety switch, and B, Kit would not be able to back up if his gear shift was in the P position, and C, Michael would have not left the gear shift in the D position which, when he shut off the engine and got out, because the car could roll, and he would not be able to immediately start the engine back up if necessary. The Topaz file requires a six-digit access code, yet Michael suggests, suggests 0001, only five digits, to Kit. Overall, really dug this episode from start to finish. It knew when to slow down and let the plot decompress, but also when to get the adrenaline going, especially with the jet scene where Michael scrambles onto it. Like I said before, this show was a mini action movie. Until next time! Good night from the night.